Next up, since the makeway for duckling statues were installed in the public garden more than three decades ago, they've become part of the fabric of this city. And over the years, Bostonians have dressed up the ducks to join in everything from holidays to sports championships and even pandemic safety precautions. Now the artist behind them is out with a new book of photographs that documents many of the artistic embellishments of her original art. It's called Ducks on Parade. It's great. Sculptor Nancy Shern joins me now. Nancy, it's great to see you, as always. Wonderful to see you again. When, the, when you first assembled this, you sculpted it, assembled it, did you even consider the notion that people were going to decide that this was something they should add to in their own kind of way? Did it ever even occur to you? Not, no. What happened was people, grandmothers particularly, mm -hmm. started sending me photographs of their kids. Over these many 30 odd years, 33 years, people have been sending me photographs of their kids on the ducks. And all of a sudden, they started sending me pictures with sort of dressed up. And then it got more and more and more. First, it started with hats, and it was Easter, and then it was some sort of political. It just grew. It grew like topsy. And then it, I'm still getting them. Now we have a whole, I think we could have another book almost already. <laughs> I hope you do. You know, I'm a huge fan of public art, but I have to say, that I have interviewed many people who create public art like you've done, and their perspective is it was intended to be exactly as it is, uh, not changed by even people who love it. Was there a piece of you at the beginning, back in the 1980s, who felt some sort of, I don't know how to call it, ownership notion, that it should be exactly as it was? Or were you amenable to these wonderful temporary additions from the first okay. moment. You know no, what I mean? No, it never, it never occurred to me to, I mean, of course, this is what they're for. This is, you know, my perspective is you touch. Public art is to touch, to love, to hug, to interact with, to sit on, you know, with all of my works, I've tried to do that. So of course things are gonna change, yes. Of course. You know, I should not have to answer this because I know a lot about you and I've been an admirer of yours for decades. Was this your first public art project or just the most prominent public art project at the time? Had it's, you done public art before? Well, this was the first public art in this sense. Prior to that, I had done some what I called million dollar walls that were large whole walls that were bronze bureaus for institutions mm. to help raise money. And they were, they were sort of substitutes for the tree of life that you you know how people would have these trees sure. and they'd have a little leaf or something. This is what I so I did some of that, a lot of fundraising way way back with institutions. Yeah, but this was the first one. So the photographs we showed the people at home a couple of minutes ago were, as I said, sports things, holiday things. Let's take it to another step. Here are, are for example, them dressed up as members of the Supreme Court. Not very political, but creative. And let's do a little more political. There was, of course, the Women's March a few years ago. And I guess you could describe these hats in a number of ways. I'll take the safe route and call them pink hats if I can. And then one of the more uh, political images, obviously the ducks in cages and wearing aluminum blankets to draw attention to family separation. I know I've asked you this before, but you aren't troubled by political expression on Not the ducklings all. either. No, I think it's wonderful. I thought, I thought this was one of the most wonderful portrayals of what was gone, going on with the kids down in Texas. This was wonderful. Unfortunately, it wasn't up long enough for too many people to see it. And I'm so glad that we were able to um, have pictures of it. So am I. But if it turns out, Nancy, let's assume, I know you're a free expression kind of person. Let's assume the expression that was visited on the ducklings was not one you agreed with. Could you, I mean, for example, there was a Black Lives uh, uh, Matter set of uh, embellishments of the ducklings. If it had been critical, let's say, of Black Lives Matter, but it was an expression of a point of view, are you okay with that or, or, or are you not? No, you and I have had this discussion. I know before. that, I know that, it was a while ago. <laughs> and yes, and yes, of course, this is what we're all about. This is a democracy and we do have 
we have to make those choices. I must say that sometimes it would be very hard for me to mm -hmm. accept anything like that. And it happens that with the ducks and what has been put on, it's all about, it's not been detrimental to anybody's feelings. I mm -hmm. Well, to my feelings, anyhow. <laughs> So uh, I, you, as an artist, you probably won't like this question, but I'll do it anyway. And you can feel free not to respond. Is there anything that has been done to the ducks that is your favorite, that really is the one that stirs the feelings of whatever it is most inside you when you see that image? I, you know, it's interesting. I particularly love the, the photograph, and I don't know if you have it, of the card that the Christmas, the Christmas card that was sent out by the friends of um, Public Art. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just marvelous. And that just made me feel so good. It, it makes the Mrs. Mallard just lovely and beautiful. <laughs> well, you know, everybody has told you a thousand million times how beautiful the work itself is but i have to say the book really added a dimension to it for those who have not seen all of this it's beautiful congratulations on it nancy and i can't wait to see what you're doing next thanks so much for your time thank you so much thank you for having me on i appreciate it great to see you the book again is ducks on parade you will love it